Hello, my name is Jonathan Chapman, and this is my talk on partition and density regularity for Diophantine systems. This talk is being recorded for the Quebec Main Number Theory Conference. I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I'll begin with partition regularity. Suppose we color the positive integers with finitely many colors. And the question we want to answer is what monochromatic arithmetic structures are guaranteed to appear? That is, what patterns can we find which are all of one color? Schur's theorem tells us that no matter how we color the positive integers, there must exist x, y, and z, all same color, such that x plus y equals z. Van der Weyden's theorem tells us that there are arbitrarily long monochromatic arithmetic progressions. In other words, no matter how we color the positive integers with finite many colors, for every positive integer L, there exists points x, x plus d, all the way up to x plus L minus one times d, all of the same color for some positive integers x and d. More generally, we refer to a system of equations as being partition regular if whenever we finitely color the positive integers, there exists a monochromatic solution to our system of equations. So Schur's theorem tells us that x plus y equals z is partition regular, and van der Weyden's theorem tells us that the system underlying arithmetic regressions is partition regular. In his PhD thesis, Rado classified partition regular linear systems. For the moment, we're just going to look at single equations. So if we look at the linear homogeneous equation, sum of ai xi equals zero, then this equation is partition regular, meaning that whenever we find the color of the positive integers, we can find xi all same color, satisfying this equation, if and only if there exists some non-empty subset, one up to s, such that the corresponding ai sum to zero. More compactly, this latter condition is equivalent to the statement that this equation has a solution over 0, 1, s other than the obvious zero solution. So in Schur's theorem, we have x plus y equals z, and that has the solution 1 plus 0 equals 1. So Rado's theorem immediately implies Schur's theorem. There is another form of regularity that we are interested in, and this is called density regularity. And essentially, this says that the system of equations has solutions over every large set. More precisely, we refer to a system of equations as being density regular if it has solutions over every set of positive upper density. And also we require that the solution that we find is non-constant. Here, a set has positive upper density if the lum sup shown here is positive. And you note that if you find the color the positive integers, one of the color classes must have positive upper density. In particular, its density is at least one over R, where R is the number of colors. And Semeredi's theorem, uh, as, um, which is a very famous theorem, um, asserts that positive upper density sets have arbitrarily long arithmetic regressions. And in particular, it's not too hard to show that this implies that a system of linear homogeneous equations is density regular if and only if it admits a constant non-zero solution. In other words, the columns of the corresponding coefficient matrix sum to zero. So again, if we look at arithmetic regressions, well, one, 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 one is an arithmetic regression, admittedly a trivial one. And so this theorem does indeed tell us that sets with positive upper density contain arbitrarily long arithmetic regressions. And so what we want to look at moving forward are generalizations of Rado's theorem and Semeredi's theorem to nonlinear systems of equations. So we're going to motivate this further by stating a number of famous open problems. Probably the most famous of these problems is this following conjecture of Erdős and Graham, which concerns the partition regularity of the Pythagorean equation. So what it's saying is that whenever we finitely color the positive integers, there exists x, y, z, all same color, such that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And we also have a conjecture of Guillemette and Ruja, which states that every subset of the squares with positive relative upper density, that means positive density with respect to the squares, um, contains a three-term arithmetic regression. And more compactly, the equation x squared plus y squared equals 2z squared is density regular. 
And if we go back to Rado's theorem and we try to uh, generalize that to the squares, then the corresponding conjecture is that the sum of ai xi squared equals zero should be non-trivially partition regular if and only if s is at least three and it obeys Rado's condition. Here, by non-trivially partition regular, I mean that we're interested in monochromatic solutions in which the xi are all distinct. And this is the reason why we impose s to be at least three, because when s equals two, it's easy to show that the only partition regular equation is some multiple of x1 squared equals x2 squared, which only has trivial solutions. I should note for this final conjecture that the only if part of this theorem is known, it actually follows from Rado's theorem. Um, so what's difficult about this result, or about this conjecture is sufficiency, is determining when an equation um, is partition regular. So now I'll state a number of relatively recent results, um, which are similar in appearance to the conjecture of Erdős and Graham, but are not quite enough to solve it. So if we sort of linearize two of the variables, then the following result of Bergelson gives us partition regularity. So we have partition regularity of x minus y equals z squared. John Moreira, in his work on um, monochromatic sums and products, proved that the sort of other way round of this equation, so if we linearize z and keep x and y as squares, is partition regular. And Sam Charles, Fear, Linkfist, and Sean Prenderville showed that the sort of generalized Pythagorean equation in which you add two extra variables is partition regular. And in fact, as we'll see shortly, their result extends to if you add even more variables. Um, so sort of x, sum of x i uh, squared equals y squared is partition regular, provided you have enough variables. You have at least five in total. And none of these results quite tackle the Pythagorean equation. The best uh, result we have in the direction of Erdős and Graham's uh, conjecture is we do know that it is true for two colors. And this was proved by Hull, Kuhlman and Marek um, using a three sat solver, which is a computer assisted proof whose uh, uncompressed size was approximately 200 terabytes, making it for a time the largest proof in existence. They showed that if you color one up to n uh, with two colors, then if n is at least 7,825, there must exist a monochromatic solution to x squared plus y squared and z squared. And here, 7,825 is sharp because they gave an example of a coloring of one up to 7,824 with no monochromatic Pythagorean triples. The result of Chow, Lingfist and Prendeville was actually part of a much larger work which attempted to generalize Rado's criterion to squares and higher powers. And the main result of that paper is as follows. Essentially, it states that Rado's criterion holds for equations in kth powers provided you have enough variables. So provided the number of variables s is at least some threshold depending on k, then the equation sum from i equals one to s of ai xi to the k equals zero is non-trivially partition regular if and only if it obeys Rado's condition. In other words, the underlying linear equation where you set the k's equal to one is partition regular. And I've just stated here the uh, bounds that they obtain for this threshold s naught of k and this these uh, this bound comes from the best known results on Waring's problem in analytic number theory. Their methods involve a use of restriction theory, Fourier analysis, and analytic number theory, mainly the circle method. And this is the connection with Waring's problem, and indeed with Vinogradov's mean value theorem. So now we want to look at Rado's criterion for systems of equations, because Rado, in fact, classified partition regularity for systems of linear equations as well. So now let's look at a system of n homogeneous linear equations in s variables. And we'll note that if this system is partition regular, meaning that we can find xi all the same color, which solve all these equations simultaneously, 
then in particular, each of these equations individually is partition regular. Moreover, if we take linear combinations of these equations, again, we get partition regular equations. So if we sort of add the top to the bottom and look at that equation, that must also be partition regular. And um, to illustrate this, let's look at the pair of equations x plus y equals z and x plus y equals 2w. Now, individually, each of these two equations is partition regular. So the top equation, that comes from Schur's theorem, and the bottom equation actually comes from van der Weyden's theorem. However, if we subtract one equation from the other, we get the equation z equals 2w, and that's not partition regular. You can see that from Rado's theorem, but you can also notice that you could color the odd numbers red, two times the odd numbers blue, four times the odd numbers red, and so on. And that has no monochromatic solutions to z equals 2w. So this tells us that it's not enough just to look at each individual equation, we also have to look at linear combinations. But suppose that we have a system of equations and we know that every linear combination is partition regular. Does that mean the system is partition regular? And Rado showed that the answer is yes. So given a system of linear homogeneous equations, the system is partition regular if and only if each linear combination gives a partition regular equation. Equivalently, this states that if you take any vector in the row space of the coefficient matrix A and look at the corresponding equation, that must be partition regular. And now bringing this um, together with the result of Chowling and Pisprendeville, we prove the following result for Rado's criterion for nonlinear systems of equations. So again, we do need some kind of condition on the systems that we look at. In Chow Lincoln's Brendeville's work, we needed to bound the number of variables. Here, the condition we have is a kind of non singularity equation, um, non singularity condition on the matrix A. So, what we require is that whenever you take uh, so de linearly independent uh, vectors in the row space of A, and you look at the matrix whose rows are these d vectors, then it has at least d k squared plus one non-zero columns. And this is true for d from one up to n, where n is the number of equations. Put this more simply, this is essentially the analog of the idea that we need sufficiently many variables, but it's extended to all kind of subsystems of our system of equations. For instance, if we take d equals to equal one, this just tells us that we need every linear combination of the equations to have sufficiently many variables or to obey the condition that appears in chow lippers prendeville's theorem. And once we have this condition, then we can show that the system of equations is partition regular if and only if it obeys Radox condition, which we can say just means that the underlying linear system where you set k equal to one is partition regular. And now let's look at density regularity. One of the most famous density regularity results for nonlinear systems is the following theorem of Bergson and Liebman. And they showed that if you take any integer polynomials, p1 up to pk, which all have zero constant term, then every set of positive upper density contains a configuration of the form x, x plus p1 of y, all the way up to x plus pk of y. And note that the y here is the same for all terms. In particular, if we set pi of y to be i times y, this, this gives us a k plus one term arithmetic regression. So this theorem immediately implies Semiredi's theorem, for example. And a couple of years ago, Tim Browning and Sean Prendeville obtained a density regularity result for single diagonal quadric equations equations in squares. And again, there's a condition on the number of variables because of the use of the circle method. So if you have at least five variables, then the equation sum of ai xi squared equals zero is density regular, meaning it has a solution in every set of positive upper density, if and only if the coefficients sum to zero. And Chow Lingfus and Prendeville extended this further and looked at kth power equations. And uh, they showed that you just need the number of variables to be at least k squared plus one to obtain this same conclusion. And once again, we can use the 
same work that we looked at earlier with Rado's criterion to extend this to systems of equations. So again, we have this condition star on which in, requires the matrix A to be sufficiently non-singular. And we conclude that provided this condition is met, then the system of equations in case powers is density regular if and only if the columns of the matrix sum to zero. And the, the proof behind these results is very similar to Chowling's and Prendeville's um, work, uh, but we require some extra uh, results in order to deal with these kind of non-singularity conditions on A, to sort of put everything together. And now I just want to end on some uh, further remarks regarding nonlinear open problems. So I, t I spoke mainly about open problems for squares, but we could also look at case powers. However, the reason that squares seem to come up more often is because for case powers, there is a difficulty in understanding the solutions to such systems. Uh, that is, we know that uh, Rado's condition is not enough to guarantee partition regularity because it's not even enough to guarantee the existence of solutions. And to give an example, let's look at this equation, this, uh, this pair of equations, which is a three-term arithmetic regression along with its common difference. Um, and if we set k equal to 1 and look at the linear system, then it follows from Rado's theorem, and in fact it was proven by Brouwer uh, in 1928, that the linear system is partition regular. However, there is a classical result of Fermat that tells us that when k equals 2, this system has no solution, no non-zero solutions at all, meaning that if you have a three-term progression of squares, then the common difference cannot be a square unless it's zero. And for k at least three, the top equation has no non-trivial solutions. This was proven by, by Darman and Morel using ideas from Andrew Weil's proof of Fermat's last theorem. Uh, that is, uh, cubes, fourth powers, and so on do not contain any three-term arithmetic progressions other than the trivial ones. And as I just said, formulating conjectures for k powers is very difficult um, because of these obstructions. And again, for the, um, if we look at Fermat's last theorem, for example, as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, that obviously obeys Rado's condition. We looked at Schur's theorem. However, as we know, there are no solutions to this equation over the positive integers. I should remark here that um, you don't actually require the full force of Weil's methods to prove that this, this is not partition regular. Um, so using some uh, sort of classical results, one can show that there are no solutions for k equal to 3 or 4. In fact, k equals 4 case is a famous result of Fermat. For k at least 5, it actually follows from Bolting's theorem in arithmetic geometry that this equation is not partition regular. Um, so we're left with the problem of determining sufficient conditions for a uh, system of equations in kth powers to be partition or density regular for k at least three. And this is still the subject of ongoing work and it's not completely clear what the answer should be. And indeed, this is related to deep issues in analytic number theory in determining whether or not such equations have solutions or not. It's not completely clear whether simply having solutions is enough for Rado's criterion and Sam Reddy's criterion um, to come into play. If you're interested in learning more, I would recommend looking at my paper on partition regularity to systems of equations and also looking at Chow Lucas and Prendeville's paper on um, Rado's criterion for uh, squares and higher powers for single equations. Uh, thank you for listening.